An open redirect happens when a website takes a URL you give it and just redirects you there. You send a request to a service and it responds with a redirection status code along with a location header pointing to the new URL. Doesn't sound dangerous, right? But here's the thing. Thanks to this one small bug, I was able to uncover two critical vulnerabilities in Grafana. The first was a full read SSRF, which gave me access to internal services. Through Grafana, I was able to read data and interact with systems that were never meant to be exposed. And second, a cross-site scripting bug that let me hijack Grafana user accounts just by clicking a link. But this wasn't a typical XSS. It was a minor client-side issue that I was able to chain with the open redirect to achieve a count takeover. It started as a simple redirect but turned into something far more serious. Let me show you how I got there. Grafana is an open source platform used for monitoring and observability. It lets you create interactive dashboards to visualize data from a variety of sources, databases, cloud services, application metrics, you name it. It's super popular, used by thousands of companies worldwide, from small startups to huge enterprises. It supports a wide range of plugins to interact with multiple data sources. If you are working with any kind of infrastructure or software that it's monitoring, chances are Grafana is involved. The platform is mainly written in Go, with parts of the frontend in TypeScript. At first, I didn't plan on searching for new vulnerabilities. I just wanted to look at the source code to check out and reproduce a past unauthenticated SSRF and the previous arbitrary file reading. But I ended up really liking the application and that was a sign I would probably enjoy trying to hack it further. At the time, I had never reviewed Go source code before and seeing so many lines of it was overwhelming. So before diving into any hacking, I usually start by learning how to use the application to understand where the sensitive information is and what possible attack vectors exist. Then I look for a good entry point in the code. I like to understand how the routes are defined and essentially what happens when a request is made. Basically, every time your browser requests a route from Grafana, the code checks all the defined routes and matches them to specific functions. To better understand how the application works, when you request a specific endpoint, the request goes through multiple functions before it reaches the final handler that deals with that particular route. For example, at a high level, when you request the dashboard route, several functions are triggered. They check if the route is static, attempt to authenticate you, handle metrics, and perform all the related tasks. All before reaching the final function that actually fetches the dashboard data and returns it to you. All of those previous steps are handled by what's called middleware functions. In Grafana, most of those functions are defined in this part of the code. Once all of them are executed, Grafana proceeds to the route-specific handlers defined in this file. As you can see, this part of the code defines a route. Here's the function that will handle that route, and here's the specific middleware functions that will be executed beforehand. In this case, the route requires authentication. Since I was looking for an unauthenticated vulnerability, I started investigating the middleware functions because they are executed before the authentication checks. One of these functions is called a static handler, and it looks like this. To understand the bug, you need to understand how this function works. So I will go over the key parts of the code. This function checks if the requested route contains the slash public prefix. If so, it serves system files like JavaScript, JSON, and other resources from the system based on the provided route. My first thought was, what if I could use this to load arbitrary files from the system? So I started digging into the code. To test it, I sent a get request to this endpoint. This is a typical payload to achieve arbitrary file read using path traversal. Once the path variable is passed to the function, the function checks if the route starts with the slash public. If it does, it removes that prefix. The resulting path is then used to request a file from the system, all inside this function. Before opening the file, any path traversal sequences are resolved by a sanitizer function. So for example, a path like this one ends up being simplified to just this. After that, the code appends the clean path to the base system directory where the files are stored. Then the file is opened and returned. This means that the initial path actually becomes something like this. Because of that, arbitrary file read isn't possible. But I kept digging into the next lines of code. Here, if the opened path 
points to a folder instead of a file, this part of the code runs. It serves the index.html file inside that folder, but the important detail is this. If the original route requested doesn't end with a slash, the application redirects the user to the same path with a trailing slash added. So if I request a slash public slash build, it's a valid folder, but since it doesn't include a trailing slash, the server automatically redirects me to the same route with a trailing slash. At the time, I thought this function would be a good part to investigate more deeply. I knew that a retry file read wasn't possible, but there was a chance of achieving an open redirect, so I spent some time analyzing it and eventually landed on a working payload that included three bypasses. But before showing you the payload, let me walk you through my entire thought process that led me there. I wanted the application to redirect users to a full URL with an external host. But there was a problem. The redirection logic in Grafana always starts the location with a slash. That normally means it's just a relative path. So the redirect stays on the same host. And that makes it a lot harder to trigger a proper open redirect. So let's take a quick second to break down how the URLs work, because understanding this is key in seeing how I made it happen. A typical URL looks like this. You've got the schema or protocol, then comes the domain or host, then the path, and sometimes query parameters. Now here's the key part. Usually, a path that starts with a single slash loads the path on the current host. So if you load the slash route from grafana.com, it will load grafana.com slash route. But if a URL starts with double slashes, like slash slash attacker.com, it actually means something completely different. That's called a protocol relative URL. It tells to the browser, go to this domain, but use whatever scheme the current page is using. So if you are on an HTTPS site, slash slash attacker.com becomes HTTPS attacker.com. And here's where the things get interesting. If you enter something like slash backslash attacker.com, many browsers will normalize that backslash into a forward slash, turning it into HTTPS attacker.com. So what looked like just like a weird path now gets interpreted as a full external URL and the browser will redirect to the external host. That's exactly what I needed, a full URL that starts with a slash. There were a lot of restrictions and the application was explicitly blocking those kinds of URLs. But eventually I found a way. Let me show you how. I'm going to explain the vulnerability the same way I approached it solving back then, by crafting the payload step by step and solving each problem along the way. The first challenge is to trigger the redirect functionality. To do that, I need a route that, when processed by the open file function, resolves to a system folder on the system. So the if is dear code will be triggered. To achieve this, I can simulate a payload route and add path traversal and sequences. So when it reaches the open file function, the path gets cleaned and resolved as an empty string. This empty string is appended to Grafana's base system folder for files. Since that path is valid, it will always resolve as a valid folder if you append enough path traversal sequences, regardless of the payload. This allows me to reach the part of the code that handles redirect with any payload, since it will always be interpreted as a folder. I solved the first problem, reaching the if is still flow with any payload. The problem is that the HTTP redirect function also resolves those path traversals, which means that the final redirect path ends up being a single slash. That's an issue, because I want the redirect to go somewhere specific, not just root. So I needed to solve another problem. I had to craft a special path that would be resolved to an empty string by the path clean function in order to trigger the redirect logic. But at the same time, it had to not be resolved when it reaches the HTTP redirect, so that my payload would remain intact in the final redirect URL. The difference in how the two functions handle the path is the key to bypassing the restriction. Path.clean expects system file paths, while HTTP redirect expects URLs. So what's the difference? The key is the question mark. In file paths, the question carter is treated as a normal path to the file or folder name. So when it's used in the path, the path.clean function will resolve it to an empty string, triggering the if is dir flow as we want. But in URLs, question marks the beginning of query parameters, 
That means if I include a question mark in the path, HTTP redirect treats everything after it as URL parameters and does not resolve or clean that part of the path. So the path.clean will clean all the path traversal to trigger the redirect flow, but the HTTP redirect will only clean the paths before the question mark. So I solved another problem. Now the path is not resolved by the HTTP redirect and I can redirect to my payload. The final part is the easiest. I need to remove the slash public part in the redirect. Since HTTP redirect resolves the path traversals before the question, I can simply include a path traversal right after public. Then add a backslash and the external host. I used a backslash instead of a regular slash because normal slashes get resolved by the HTTP redirect. So when you request the final payload, it redirects you to the external host you want. To load this in the browser, you need to URL encode it. So the flow of the final payload would be as follows. You send this payload, the prefix is stripped, it reaches the file open function and path.clean resolves the path to an empty string. This empty string is appended to Grafana Space System folder and the folder is opened and returned. It ends up being a valid folder, so the code reaches the if is there condition. The original path starts with the slash public, so it bypasses the relative path scheme checks. It then reaches the HTTP redirect, which resolves the first path traversal, but not the ones after the question mark. As a result, the server redirects the user to attacker.com. I have an open redirect, which is harmless on its own and it's just the starting point of the exploit. Thanks to this open redirect, I created two different exploit methods. The key to escalate in an open redirect is to find where the application expects and trusts a relative URL, but wasn't designed to handle attacker control content. Grafana has an endpoint called slash render. The endpoint receives a request with a specified route. A headless browser running in the server is used to render the HTML of the provided page. The headless browser takes a screenshot of the rendered page and generates an image from it. The slash render endpoint only accepts relative URLs from the same host. It does not allow full external URLs, so you can only load URLs from the Grafana instance. But as you know, I have a Grafana path that redirects to attacker.com. This creates the perfect scenario to append my open redirect path to the slash render endpoint. When I request this path, the headless browser on the server loads what it considers a trusted URL of the Grafana instance. However, since the path contains my malicious open redirect, the browser is forced to load any destination I choose. This can be exploited to load internal URLs through the browser. Because the browser runs server-side, it has access to the internal network, and I receive the rendered images of those pages. The exploit flow works as follows. You request this endpoint. The server-side browser extracts the route from the provided URL and sends a request. The route is my open redirect, so Grafana redirects the browser to an internal URL. The browser loads the internal URL, generates a JPG, and sends it back to me. Now I have an image of the internal service. Developers often misconfigure internal services because they assume these services are safe behind the firewall and not accessible from the internet. As a result, these internal services may have existing vulnerabilities that can be exploited once accessed via SSRF. If Grafana is hosted in a cloud environment like AWS, this SSRF can be even more dangerous. It might let me access to cloud metadata APIs or other sensitive internal endpoints, potentially leading to full cloud environment compromise. If the headless browser running in the server is unpatched, it could lead to multiple serious remote command execution vulnerabilities. Not long after this bug was fixed, Grafana patched its headless browser because it contained several RCE issues. SSRF is a powerful attack with significant impact, but the problem is that it requires certain conditions to be exploited. You either need valid credentials for a Grafana instance or at least anonymous access has to be enabled, since the render endpoint requires authentication. Because of that, I started looking for another exploitation path, something that would work even when credentials were required. 
That's when I discovered a way to trigger an XSS by using the open redirect. With this chain, I could trick a victim into clicking a malicious link, steal their account, and then use their credentials to exploit the SSRF. Grafana is mostly a single page application, which means that all the front end content like HTML, CSS, and JavaScript is loaded once, and then the page dynamically updates and requests data without needing to reload the whole page again each time you navigate. This makes the app feel faster and more responsive. All the communication between the frontend and the backend is made with JavaScript. There's a common issue in this kind of frontend architectures called client-side path traversal. Here's how. Grafana's client-side JavaScript has a path traversal issue. For example, if you load this route in your browser, the JavaScript triggers a request to this other. This URL is created using the value of the top URL. However, if you inject a path traversal in the top URL, when the JavaScript creates the new URL, it resolves the path traversal and actually loads a slash route. This flaw lets me load any relative path I want. Now I need an endpoint that loads and trusts relative path to escalate the open redirect. Grafana has a lot of plugins that perform multiple tasks. If you load this path, the JavaScript on the client side loads plugin apps by pulling plugin info from the top URL. That settings endpoint returns a JSON file. One important field in that JSON is module, which points to the JavaScript file that will be executed. The client side trusts this JSON content, meaning it will load whatever JavaScript file is specified. The key advantage is that we control which relative path the JavaScript will request, thanks to the client side path traversal I explained it earlier. What if I use the client side path traversal issue to load my open redirect? I created a URL that uses both the path traversal and the open redirect together. When a victim loads the URL in their browser, here's what happens. The JavaScript reads the top URL and generates a new seemingly weird path. Thanks to the path traversal, this path resolves to the open redirect. When the JavaScript requests that relative URL, the server redirects it to my malicious JSON hosted on my server. The JSON includes the path to my malicious JavaScript file. The victim's browser loads and executes that script. The JavaScript file will change the victim's email and password. This means I can force the victim to change their email and reset their password, effectively hijacking their account completely. Using the exploit would look like this. In practice, an attacker sends a malicious link to a victim. Once the attacker hijacks their account, they can exploit the SSRF to access internal services or even gain RCE. I tried to explain the vulnerability chain and all the thought processes as best as I could. I hope you understood it. If you want to try this yourself, download the vulnerable Grafana version and run the exploit linked in the description. But how this exploit affect the real world? Before the official fix, this issue impacted almost all Grafana instances exposed to the internet. According to scanners, over 500,000 instances were vulnerable to the open redirect. I reported the issue, and after some time, the Grafana team patched it and assigned a CVE identifier. Grafana is everywhere in the bug bounty scene. A friend of mine even found a vulnerable instance at Microsoft and got paid for reporting it. This is a perfect example that even if a vulnerability is officially patched, there are always unpatched versions out there. This is probably one of my best bugs I've ever found. It's the one that gave me the most satisfaction because it's in a well-known application and I can share it publicly. I would like to recreate and explain previous complex attacks or even analyze open source applications to show how they work. Share your ideas in the comments. I hope you enjoyed the video.